Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at Amazon. And so first thing I always do before I pull out the DCF for a company is we calculate the WAC. It's a really common question I always got is how do you calculate the WAC for your model? So now I decided I would just calculate it so everyone understood. So what we have here is a template that I pulled together. Market value of equity, 1.59 trillion. This just comes from Yahoo Finance. Market value of debt, this is gonna come from their most recent 10K. We have a debt schedule here. And if you actually go over to their 10K and go to page, I think it's 56 in here, you'll see how I pulled this together. If this is something you wanna do yourself, you'll see 2012 notes, 14, 17, and 20. And then on top of that, they have the credit facility and other long-term debt. You'll notice for other long-term debt and credit facility, they actually don't have the effective interest rate listed. So there's an NA here, but I'll walk us through real quick. So first thing to do is we wanna calculate basically the weighted average cost of debt. So we lay out the current principal amounts, which is given to us here for 2020. From there, they give us the effective interest rate, but some of these you'll see there's a range. So that means they probably issued a handful of different types of instruments in this offering and maybe just different durations of notes, different things of that nature. So what I always do, because we don't have better information as we take a midpoint of these ranges. So if you look at the formula, you'll see it's 5.11% minus 3.43% divided by two added back to the lower bound. And that'll get you the midpoint. So we'll do that for all of these. And then for the credit facility and other long-term debt, I've actually just used the average of all of these because they don't give it to us. I mean, it's a pretty small amount of debt anyway, so it's not gonna be super material to the overall interest rate. So layer that in. And then we're gonna calculate the interest expense. And this is calculated off of the current principal amount. So just how much interest they're gonna pay. So we do that. Um, once you have that, you'll actually just sum these numbers up basically. And then you'll sum up this amount. And then you'll divide the interest into the current principal amount. And that's where you get the 2.99% here if you're following the formulas. Pretty simple stuff. We get the cost of debt and we get the market value of debt right there. Cost of equity, we're gonna calculate using CAPM. And actually corporate tax rate should be 21%. So cost of equity, we use CAPM treasury yields. There's a link here, but um, you can just go to the treasury.gov website and they show you the most recent 30 year. Basically, we're trying to get the risk-free rate here. So 2.4% is our proxy for that. Expected return of the market, 8%. This just comes from Investopedia. Super simple, average historical return of the S&P 500 since like 1950, once it actually had 500 companies in it. And the tricky part with cost of equity is calculating beta. You can be lazy. You can come here and you can actually just pull it from Yahoo Finance. You'll see they have 1.15. We calculate it and we get 1.13. So it might be a slight difference there. They might be using a slightly different data set um, or doing something, maybe not comparing it to SPY, maybe comparing it to another S&P index. But to calculate beta, you're going to need two things. You're going to need the historical closing price by month for the last five years of Amazon, and then also for the index you want to compare it to. So SPY in this example. So SPY tracks the S&P 500. To actually get this data, very simple. When you're on Yahoo, type in the stock ticker. Let's type in Amazon. Let's go historical data now. And then you're going to select this box, go five year, frequency, monthly, apply. From here, you'll hit download. It's going to download a spreadsheet open up that spreadsheet and you're just gonna copy the adjusted close column, paste it in. And then I always just make sure my dates line up. Um, so you'll see like May 1st, 2021. When you download the sheet, it actually comes in reverse order. So here's the May 1st, 2021. So you'll do that. You'll do the same thing, search for SPY. Just like that, you'll go ahead and hit historical data, five year, monthly, apply, download, paste in the adjusted close. And then you're gonna calculate the percentage change, which is just current period divided by prior period minus one. That gives you the percentage change up or down. From there, you'll see off to the side here, you're gonna calculate the variance of SPY and you're gonna do var.s. So this is just a sample of data, not a full population. And if you, you know, if you did population data, you might actually get something a little bit different and we could do that. Um, and that might be what uh, Yahoo is doing there. So if we do covar, Right, we might actually, oh, it goes down. So we actually get a little bit less when we make it a population instead of a sample, but um, calculate the covariance of Amazon and SPY. You can follow the formula here. And then the beta is just the covariance divided by the variance. 
And if you're not familiar with beta, what this is, is basically if the S&P were to move 1%, we would expect Amazon to move 1.13%. And this goes for both up and down. So if S&P goes up 1.13, 1%, we go up 1.13. If it goes down 1%, we go down 1.13. So this just says we're a little bit riskier per se than the broader market is how we're, we're valued based off or how we're looked at based off our stock returns. And then from there, you get your cost of equity. You can follow the formula. It's just a cap M formula. Um, and then from there, right, cost of equity, corporate tax rate, and we get our WAC. WAC is just the proportion of debt and equity times their respective rates and then added together. So you do, you know, 3% times 33 billion divided by basically 1.62 trillion. That's times 3%, which is going to be a pretty small number. Um, and then same thing with cost of equity, you do 1.59 divided by the 1.62 trillion times 8.7, and you'll see you get a whack of 8.6. So basically their cost of capital is really just their cost of equity because they have so little debt in comparison to equity. But this will be the, the whack we use as our baseline when we go ahead and pull together the DCF in the coming days. So um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for tuning in.